What's up guys? I have my pruners because we are heading back to the garden. It was supposed to actually rain all day today and it hasn't rained yet. It does. It's really, really gray and it does feel very humid and it feels like moisture in the air, but it actually hasn't rained. And so I'm going to be picking a few random things and then I'm going to also prune my tomatoes. This will be the third time that I've pruned the tomatoes out here in the garden i've only pruned the tomatoes inside the hoop house once but i pruned the tomatoes out in the garden already twice and they just keep growing back um and or growing more suckers and growing longer and taller which is completely nice and fine but i need to i saw them falling over again and all the things so i need to prune again but before i do that i am right here at the front of this bed where in my last video i pulled all of these onions and there were i said that there were garlic here that i wasn't pulling yet but today as i was cleaning up this bed i saw that these garlic are actually they've fallen over and they're actually really really yellow and so i'm gonna actually harvest these this is garlic that I transplanted. Actually, all of my garlic is garlic that I transplanted from other areas of my garden. And as I was, um, like I said, digging around the, in the soil because I uh, did see a few grubs in here that I wanted to get out when I was harvesting onions, um, I saw that this garlic looked, oh, it's actually elephant garlic. So this is elephant garlic. If you're unfamiliar with elephant garlic, it gets these little baby garlics at the bottom and those won't turn into elephant garlic until like the second year but the reason why i was pulling these is because the they seem so um like they're not attached to the soil anymore and i don't know if it's because of me just messing around with the onions next to them that that's what happened but these are actually elephant garlic I wasn't really I wasn't really sure what kind of garlic it was I'm gonna leave all of these little baby ones in the soil so that they can come back but I'm going to take off out the bowls as for these onions I am leaving them and I did separate the soil at the base but um, if they don't grow much bigger than they already are I'm going to use these for pickling um, onions because I really do like pickled onions and if you guys have any other ideas of what I could do with baby onions besides pickle them, I know of course I could, you know, still, well, depending on the size, I could still uh, chop them up. But besides pickling and chopping them up and freezing them, because when they get really tiny, it just gets tedious. What other ideas do you have for really tiny onions? So, As you can see, I'm actually can't wait to pickle these. I love pickled red onions especially. And so when I saw that my red onions that I planted this year weren't doing good, that's what made me change my mind about picking these onions. I was actually letting them go to seed. Um, I can't show you this without, but there, the there's like three more red onions here that I've left and they're actually going to seed and I was going to save seed but when I realized that my onions over there my red onions over there weren't going to do good I decided to pick these two onions they weren't going to seed or anything or having a flower and so it was the perfect time to pick them and then the other three that have already gone to seed and a flowering those are the ones I'll use to save seed for my next year's uh, crop so as you can see the tomatoes are very very lush uh, these are my cherry tomatoes and like I said I've already pruned that's a sucker I've already pruned um, these tomatoes about two times and it's like by the time I finish all five rows of tomatoes I look back at the first row and it grew again and it's time to prune again. Especially like that, they start growing out of the, the ground um, 
at the base and start trying to create a whole new plant. I don't need any more tomato plants because I have over 200 tomato plants planted. But if I did in previous years, I have done that to pick off really big, big suckers and then keep them to uh, keep them so that I could have new tomato plants. But I'm not doing that this year because I have all the tomatoes that I could possibly uh, want or need. I'm going to be careful as to what I'm cutting and make sure I'm not cutting the base of these plants like I did inside the hoop house. It's such a good feeling to see tomatoes already um, forming on most all of my tomato plants. I have tomato, like baby tomatoes or flowers, um, which is really, really nice. because I hope to get a really amazing tomato harvest this year. This clip broke, so I'm gonna need to go get another clip to hold this up. I'm also gonna need to fertilize tomorrow. I have my phone to ring, I think every three weeks for fertil fertilizing, and I've missed the last like two times, I think, but this time I'm going to fertilize because I'll show you, but on some of my tomato plants in another bed, I can see that the bottom leaves are starting to turn yellow. And so I'm wondering if it is a deficiency, which it shouldn't be, um, but you never know. And I have the, fer I have the fertilizer, so might as well. So when I just say deficiency, I thought I should explain what I what I was talking about. These beds used to be three by six beds and I made them 15 feet long by adding or having my son add a three foot board to connect them. And everywhere where I added a three foot piece of board and then just backfilled it with whether it was horse manure or compost, um, the soil is struggling in that area. The peppers, you can see it the most. And so that's why I'm standing in front of the peppers so that I can show you the difference. So from right here, that's a three foot bed and the six foot ends right here. And you can see how all of that is nice, lush, green, big pepper plants. And then this space right here going to right here. So these peppers right down this, you see how yellow they are and tiny. And then you go back over here and this is another three by six foot bed. And you can see how those peppers and marigolds look so lush. And so if you're looking from this way, you can see how all of this green lush peppers going, then it gets to puny, yellow, tiny peppers, and then back to green lush peppers again. And it's kind of like that everywhere I've planted this year. Um, it started where um, with the potatoes, if you watched that video where I harvested potatoes, they started dying in the three foot bed that, um, or the three foot section that I harvested first. That's the section I harvested first. And then now this pepper bed. And then so what I'm saying is the tomatoes that you're about to see in this next clip is the tomatoes that are yellowing and um, they're in that three foot uh, vicinity area. And so I'm definitely thinking it's the soil. So I think these are the ones that I've pruned the most as I'm just like daily walking by. These are also the ones, let me bring you in closer and show you that have the spots at the bottom. I was already out here yesterday pulling some of them, but let me. They have this like yellowing right here. Um, and I'm wondering if that's from a nutrient deficiency because they're at the bottom of the leaves and we have drip. They're not uh, at the top and so, I don't know what's going on here, but that's what's going on. 
this one i have actually there's i don't know if you can see oh yeah you can there's tomatoes all over it it's um one of these orange tomatoes it was actually my first orange tomato growing successfully it was about this big um and it was very very pretty um i don't know how to say it it's like a z o y c h k a um and it looks like it's going to grow prolifically for me again i have two side by side each other and i'm really happy to have them again it's one of those days where it feels so moist and humid outside um, I'm like it hasn't rained yet but it just feels like the moisture is in the air and like I said there's gray clouds above me it's so hot but I finally did finish oh my god here comes shadow my garden kitty uh, I finally finished pruning all five rows of my tomatoes um, and my hoop house is not ready to be pruned again thank goodness but I wanted to bring you in here this is my hoop area this is my hoop area where I planted my pole beans and bush beans and I wanted to show you I actually already have green bean I actually already have green beans that are almost ready to pick let me show you I saw this yesterday that there's actually baby green beans in here which is crazy to think that it's almost time to be able to start picking like look at that one like it's legit almost time to start picking green beans it's really only on this one plant uh, but I do have other plants that are starting to put out some beans as well and my pole beans have definitely started almost reached the top since I was using seeds that um that just fell out of the bag i don't really know i know my bush beans on this side is painted pony and the bush beans on this side i'm not sure what they are i know there's obviously some purple some uh what is it called burgundy purple royal purple what's it called royal burgundy bush bean something like that because i see the purple um but i'm not sure what the purple pole bean it could be purple um why am I forgetting all the names of beans right now? The purple bean that goes up that I grew last year. And I think I did save seeds for that. And I think that's what that is. And then I know that this, after I recorded that video and said I didn't remember what it was, I remembered that that is Scarlet Runner bean. But, um, and then these other pole beans that just have, that are just green, I'm not 100 percent sure what they are these are like basically all mystery beans besides that bed right there um because they were just beans that fell out of the bag and i was just was like okay i'm gonna plant them and then when some didn't germinate i replanted um the purple um what is it called the painted pony bush bean because that's actually my favorite bush bean i've talked about that previously how much bush beans i got and they were like the slim slender um bush bean that i like and they you can use them for dry bush dry bush dry bean or just like a regular string bean and they're stringless um and so with that saying which i said i didn't know what they were this last cattle panel so this last you know four foot cattle panel right here there's no pole beans going up because like I said I was just hoping that they were pole beans and obviously they're not these are bush beans that I just showed you that are starting to bush and so I only have two who on this side I have all three chalices are pole beans so they're growing up but on this side only two chalices are actual pole beans growing up the last trellis um, and it's too densely densely planted for me to try to go in and plant um, pole beans now and so I'm just gonna have to wait um, and do like a second round or second wave of pole beans right now and so I'm gonna have like an empty spot underneath my my trellis but I just want to show you guys that before um, oh wait one other thing I want to show you another thing I saw yesterday was my amaranth has so many holes in it and I'll have to see if I can see them but they're leaving my cucumbers alone which I've shared that 
amaranth is a trap crop for cucumbers but on yesterday i saw that there were so many squash bugs on this they're not there they're not there right now uh, maybe because it's too hot or too early or late for them but you can see you can see where they're eating this amaranth but they're leaving my cucumbers alone which is of course why i planted the amaranth there anyway but to see it in live action is awesome so that i could show you guys um and yeah i'm going to i'm all done now i need to wash my hands from all that tomato grime and go inside the the onions that I picked, the red onions, I have to let them cure, which is basically like let them dry out the roots and the tops before I can do anything with them. And then we'll pickle them. So I have to let them dry for about two to three weeks. The garlic, I could use this as fresh garlic. It's actually elephant garlic. And so I could just use it as fresh green garlic and use it right now. And I didn't, I did this before I started the camera, but I had garlic scapes um, because I guess I have some hard, not all of the garlic I planted in the in-ground bed is elephant garlic. Some is obviously hard neck garlic. And so I did clip some of those as well. And we can use this to saute. So that was my little garden harvest for today. Thank you guys for hanging out with me while we harvested some random loose ends and pruned tomatoes and i'll see you guys next time bye guys